fish tank guy here and today I'm going to be doing a water change on the 29 gallon bio cube. I'm surprised I actually haven't done it yet but you know better late than never right. So when it comes to water changes there are a lot of conflicting um, opinions on when you should be performing them and how often. Some people say once a week, some people say bi-weekly, some people say once a month. And I'm of the belief that when you're first starting your tank, you should do it fairly often, like once a week. And then as your tank becomes established, you can, you can maybe do it bi-weekly and then eventually once a month. Um, depending on you know, the balance of having a good cleaner crew and not overloading with a ton of fish and things like that. So um, the reason I'm doing my water change today is because I've noticed an increase in algae growth. And I think it's because I've gotten lazy with my water changes. So now I'm just going to take you through the steps that I kind of perform every time when I do a water change. Um, you can do something similar to this. You might do something completely different than this. It's really up to you. So um, the first thing I do is I start off with using my, my mag float cleaner and I scrape any remaining algae off the glass. Now, you're not really going to be able to see any because before I... Before I started the video, I actually went around the entire tank and I did this already. So this is just kind of an, an example, sort of. Now, with the BioCube, even if you have a mag float, one of the difficulties in relying on it solely is these curved corners. So you're going to have to use, uh, um, you're going to have to stick your whole arm in there with one of the glass scrub, scrub kind of sponge type things. and. Uh, clean the algae off of the corner as well. So um, the reason I do this when I do a water change is because it not only do I like to keep the glass clean but it also stirs up and breaks the algae off the glass and then it obviously goes into the water and when I'm doing the water change that means that I'm likely sucking up some of that algae and things that I don't really want in my tank. So okay that's the first thing I do. The second thing I do and again, this is conflicting. Some people don't do this. Some people like to do it. I like to do it. Take my handy dandy turkey baster and I just go throughout the tank and I blow off the rocks. This is to, you know, remove any detritus or things that have built up. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the video, but there are, yeah, there we go. There's stuff flying about here. Okay, whoa. My, my scooter bunny is interested in what I'm doing. I can't, he is bold, man. I can't believe it, he's very bold. Oh, he's right up here. Now, some, pe some people may be of the belief that, you know, you do not need to blow off your rocks if you have good flow. Well, I think I have pretty good flow and I still need to blow off my rocks. And the reason I say that is because I have watched Dwight, my hermit crab, I call him Dwight because I, I'm a big fan of The Office and he thinks he is the king of the tank, just like he did on the just like Dwight does on The Office, thinks he's the king of the tank. So, Dwight will, as he's cleaning sand on the bottom, basically carry it up to the rocks and dump it in the crevices. So, regardless of how good my flow is, there's always going to be some stuff that I can get out of these rocks. So that's why I choose to to go this route. Oh wow, that was a good one. Yeah. I actually like to see the stuff fly up. It means I'm cleaning. Uh-oh. The turkey baser just came apart. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know if you can see any of this, but there's plumes of stuff. There we go. Plumes of stuff rising. Rising off of the rocks. Some places more than others. Okay. Yeah, over here, Dwight likes to bring sand on this rock here. Not a whole lot, though. Not a whole lot of, uh, there we go. Some stuff coming out there. I'm going to switch sides. Trying to get this back rock. Oh, there we go. I know you can't see that because it's behind the rock, but whoops. <laughs> Some of the cleaner crew are 
they're just casualties in this in this exercise. You just get pushed pushed around. All right, everything looks good here. Let's give this. Oops, stir up the sand a little bit. Okay, I'll use my do my aqua mag. Oh, I got a bunch off the aqua mag. Okay. We'll do one more down here, kind of stir up some things on this flat rock. Ooh, there's a good one. Nothing there. How about behind the coral? Oh my goodness. Oh my, sorry, Scooter. Oh my goodness. So much on this rock on the bottom. So much. I know, I know Dwight hangs out on this rock quite a bit. Okay. What's up, Jerry? The green chromus, his name is Jerry. His name is Jerry. And uh, the, the yellow watchman, I don't know if he's out and about, but his name's Ron. His name is Ron because of the show Parks and Rec. Ron always has that kind of frown on his face, just like the, the watchman Gobi. And uh, this guy right here, his name's Scooter, just because he's a Scooter Blenny. I didn't, I didn't come up with anything uh, too special for him. So, all right. Now, now that we've got that taken care of, we've stirred up a lot of stuff in the water here. And it, this, this is a perfect opportunity for us to start using our gravel back in here to <clears throat> get that water out of there. Um, and like I said, because we have all this stuff floating around, Come on. This thing drives me crazy. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. Alright, okay. So now I'm just going to sort of let this thing roam around. Um, some people, they clean their sand. I don't clean it all that often, but because I've been having an algae problem, I'll, I'll stir it up a little bit. I don't, I don't want to do too much. I just want to... Now, one thing I do know for sure is that if you have a deep sand bed, um, oftentimes using the gravel back is not a good idea because if you go too deep, you can release some harmful gases into the tank. And uh, some people have had issues with those harmful gases wreaking havoc, like killing everything, I guess. Uh, not me. I've never had that experience, thankfully. But, so I'm, I'm going to stir up some sand. Normally, I do not do this. Normally, I just stick to pulling things out of the water column. Um, but like I said, since I have had some algae problems in the sand, I am basically doing this to stir it up a little bit. Because um, the algae don't like, you know, algae doesn't like living on stuff that's necessarily moving around and, and, and whatnot. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to come in the middle here and I'm just going to suck up some water for a bit. There's a lot of stuff floating around in the column. And even though it's really hard to see, I'm definitely pulling in a good amount of junk here. So, because I'm removing water and we're going to hit the minimum water level, I'm going to turn off the pumps. I do have a digital aquatics reef keeper. That, yep, there go the pumps. Um, that I haven't really talk too much about, but I will in maybe a future video. It's really awesome. Okay, there we go. We got the pumps turned off. All right. So now it's really just up to pulling out the old water. You know, do a little, uh, do a little vacuuming if I want here. I might do a little more. I'm not going to do too much, but it's nice to, uh, personally, I like to have clean sand, you know, kind of like white sandy. Oh boy, I don't want to cover that hole up. That's where 
That's where Ron likes to hang out. He likes to hang out down here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed the video up a little bit because this is going to take some time. I'm taking out almost five gallons, and I'm, I'm taking my time. So I'm going to speed the video up, and you can watch that if you want, or you can fast forward it a minute or so, and then we'll continue with our water change. And okay, so you definitely removed enough water. All right. Now, let's see. Okay, so pretty much at this point, um, there's not a two. There's not a, a whole lot you need to do that's really difficult or anything like that. Now, I always like to change my filter. Uh, my filter, my poly floss stuff, my filter, um, whenever I do a water change. But since I just changed it a day or two ago, well, I'll actually take a look at it. And if it looks bad, I'm going to change it anyway. Um, but <clears throat> now a really crucial uh, part of doing the water change is the water that you put back into the tank. Now, obviously you have to make sure that you have salt water. Um, you can't just put... Uh, your distilled water back in there you have to make up a batch of salt water you usually do it ahead of time so here I have um, another five gallon bucket with a salt water mix um, I don't buy pre-mixed salt water I buy water and I buy salt so I mix it I mix it up I actually have a heater in here that is heating the water to roughly the same temperature that, it, that um, there is in the tank right now and uh, in addition, um, oh, in addition, you want to make sure that your salt and your salinity level is it pretty much as close as you can get to what you have in the tank. So right now, my salinity level is 1.025 in the tank. So I mixed up my salt water batch here to be 1.025. Uh, makes sense. But um, there are a couple ways you can put water back in the tank. Some people choose to slowly pour it in. Some people dump it in all at once, which is probably not good because it might shock the fish or startle the fish. Um, when I'm doing a smaller water change, I'll you know slowly pour the water back into the tank with the bucket, or I'll even pour it into the back chambers to not disturb the fish or the coral too much. Um, but since I'm doing a larger water change and this bucket is pretty heavy with almost five gallons in it, uh, that might make it difficult to pour it slowly. So I'm gonna use the same uh, the same gravel vacuum uh, that I use to pull the water out of the tank and I'm going to put water back into the tank from the new water bucket. So uh, I'm going to do that now. Uh, so let's get it started here. And again, it's going to take a while so I'll probably time lapse the video or I'll either cut it and then come back. Uh, let's see here. I'll either cut it or come back depending on how long it takes. Uh, but let's at least get it started here. So it doesn't really matter. I'm actually going to kind of move it to the back here. Again, away from the away from the fish and the plants and whatnot. Um, you can even drape it over something. Maybe I'll do that. This is actually the first time I've done a larger water change in this tank, so I don't really have a system here. Maybe I'll do something like that. Okay. I can stay. I'm worried I'm gonna walk away. It's gonna come out. All right, there we go. So now we're moving the uh, we're moving the fresh fresh. No, we're moving. Well, it's, it is fresh. The fresh salt water. The uh, the new salt water into our tank. And what I'm gonna do real quick? I'm gonna take a look at the media. Here's a sponge I have. It's uh, looks okay it's getting a little gnarly um, and I am going to change out my filter floss especially just because I cleaned out a lot of algae and I think it'd be good to start fresh you can see I don't know if you can see in the video but uh, half of it is very green I don't know if you can tell or not by looking at it but half of it is very green this is the half where the water tr trickles down into so I am going to replace this um, again what a lot of people do is they um, 
when they replaced the filter media, I'll actually show you real quick. When they replaced the filter media, let me grab one. Okay. What they'll do is they'll actually sort of rinse it out, or um, you know, yeah, rinse it out in case there's any, you know, uh, whatever on it. They'll rinse it out in the water they just removed from the tank because they know that that water is, is good. Um, you know that it was it was salt water. It had some beneficial bacteria in it. Um, you know, I personally don't see a huge problem with rinsing it, rinsing it with tap water, but if you have a bucket of water handy that you just emptied out of the tank, you might as well just play it safe. So now that I've rinsed that out, I'm going to put it back in my media basket. Okay. All right. Oh, that, 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 was a, that was a fairly, I need to cut this one very good. All right. There's that. And then you kind of do the same. You do the same with a sponge too. Some people don't have both. I chose to have both. Um, I know this video is going to be long, and I'm going to be rambling, but it's all it's it's all good. It's all good. Okay. So again, just using this water to kind of rinse it out, get the gunkies out of it, any larger particles, any you know darker colored material that has been sucked up by the sponge. And it does look much better now. I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's uh it's less less dark in color. I'm gonna put that back. And I'll put this back. Okay, this thing seems to be a pain sometimes. Well, I do want to maybe empty it out. Okay. And the other thing you can do is you can empty your protein skimmer. Uh, I'm not gonna do it on video because the video is long enough already with me, you know, rambling on and on. Um, but you obviously, you know, take the cup off your protein skimmer, dump it out. Uh, again, you can rinse it in your, in the water that you took out of the tank, um, and then put it back in, which I'll do off camera. I'll do it on camera, um, but I'll probably be speeding this up, so I'm not going to talk during it. But uh, so that's pretty much it. I'll I'll come back after the water has been filled back up when I turn the pumps on, so you can see kind of what that looks like, and that'll be a water change in 29 gallon biofuel. So, uh, we'll be back shortly. Okay, so we have all of our, our new water in the tank and everything looks pretty good. I'm going to turn the pumps back on. Okay. So, things are looking pretty good. Um, I'm very hopeful that over the course of the next few days, I'll see a reduction in algae um, because of the water change. Hopefully that will um, remove some of the, the, the buildup that was in the tank that I needed to get rid of. And uh, that will, you know, not promote the growth of new algae. So. I'm sorry, I apologize for some of my long-windedness during this video, but I'm hoping that it gave you a good idea about what a water change with a BioCube 29 gallon tank would be like, or what it is like for me. Um, again, these are just uh, this is just one way you can do it. Um, people do it many different ways. They do different quantities. They do different frequency. Um, it's all really up to you and your tank. You know, you'll learn kind of what works best for your mini reef and your mini environment. Uh, and over time, you'll, you'll settle down into a routine that works good for you. So um, I'm the Fish Tank King. I really want to thank you guys a whole lot for watching. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe. And also remember to follow me on Twitter, at RealFishTankGuy. Um, if you only see a couple tweets, it's because I don't really have many followers yet. So. Once I get some more followers, I will be a lot more active in the Twitter sphere um, and we can chat about fish tanks or life or whatever you guys want to talk about. So uh, once again, thanks for watching and hope, I'm hoping that you'll return to my channel in the future for some more awesome, informative, and kind of fun fish tank videos. Peace.